All right, this is a video of ins installation for a Tempo 2 Plus 2 flooded lead acid. The visage screen, and this actually has the monsoon roof, so it's a different configuration than just a standard two seat golf car. So parts will be shipped to the property from three locations. The first of which will be a, a, sh a shipment coming from Sarasota, which will be this install kit. In the kit, you're gonna find a crossbar that replaces the cons plastic console for a typical, typical two-seater, a back plate covering the actual VDU. This toggle switch actually will be coming from Augusta in a different shipment, but we already put it on. A couple of guides for the top of the crossbar strut to put the harness inside. An old back plate that you will not need. It has a small opening, which is too small for the large 14 pin connector in the back of the visage screen. And a bunch of the nuts and bolts, as well as a rear view mirror and the rear view mirror bracket. So those are all the pieces that uh, come in the box. There'll also be a shipment that will include this actual harness here, which is the harness that connects the top of the strut to the back of the VDU with an adapter right there as well. And then we have a jumper harness. This actually is at the base of the strut that connects the base of the strut to the Deutsch connector that's under the dash. And yep. And then of course, you see the wired strut and that comes from Augusta. So those are all the parts that you need. And then there are tools that are specific for this particular installation. So have them ready when you have to install. They include a 10 inch crescent, T27 star, T30 works as well, a 10 millimeter socket, a nine, or an eight millimeter socket, and a 15 millimeter socket for the um, uh, toggle switch and a half inch for the mirror. So a bunch of different sockets. Big flat hat usually helps out. And then we'll need uh, zip ties and cutters for the uh, securing of the cable. Great. That's all our tools. So we're gonna get into the installation piece of it right now. We will remove the roof bolts already, the four roof bolts up top. Um, usually we save the washers and nuts but this kit does come with everything so we don't need to save any of that uh, first uh, and then I got to remove the side holder since we're putting a new strut on we have to use pieces and parts from the old strut including the rubber stopper for the windshield and the, and the end cap at the top of the strut needs to be saved as well. That's 10 millimeter for the bottom side panel. We gotta get the strut off and the mirror. So you remove this one side bolt for the mirror. Don't have to worry about the driver side, just the passenger side. Here. Remove. Pop this open so you can get full access in here. I like to leave it open so you can get a little bit easier access with your T30, which pause. The T30 is not here. Damn it. Ready to go. Okay, while we're looking for a particular tool, I want to quickly show you an installed unit for reference. There's actually the screen, there's the mirror will be hanging. This particular unit does not, this vehicle does not have a, a windshield. The back plate that I showed you that came in that white box. 
the little channel guides that we showed you in that white box. There it is. So he's got the handy. T30. Get these loose half off because we are going to remove it. hang on to all the bolts and everything like that. This usually hangs here for now. New strut. Remove the wire guide that is at the top of the strut. It is unnecessary with these monsoon roofs. It will not fit with the monsoon roof. Have an extra side panel. Unnecessary. Get the top in. Put the bottom in. And you can kind of connect the windshield now so it stays and the actual strut stays to get the strut bolts back in. Put that in. I usually switch this up and put in my jumper cable down below in order to close all this up. You can reach into the dash. You don't have to fully Remove the dash. You can kind of get underneath here and find the little Deutsch connector that you need amongst all the wiring. You can stuff the rest back in. Find your Deutsch connection. Get it in. We're tucking it behind the cup holder. Lift the cup holder and you can get the wire back up behind it and through towards the front here. I usually get my flathead, pry it up, lift with my left hand and pry this up enough to get it out and underneath the cowling. And then make sure your wirings are correct. Connect it up straight. Make sure it clicks and doesn't pull out on its own. It's secure and we can seal this bottom side up because it's all done. While he's doing this, just make sure when you're actually connecting the storage connectors, you take a look at the pins. Make sure they're straight. If they're not straight, one's bent and you push too hard and you bend the pin, you will not get the, true, uh, the correct connection, which could either cause an issue with powering on the, the unit or reading the engine. Now Ron is actually putting stuff together. Yep, putting back on the windshield stuff. Working my way back up. Now we talked about saving the cap. So there's, yes. a, there's a cap at the end of this harness. That we, or the old uh, strut. Yeah, we're going to save that. We're not going to put it on just yet because this piece right here, where it's going to go, that wire that's actually inside there sometimes gets in the way we try to stick the, the bolts through. So we'll leave that off so we can actually work with the wiring inside the, the, uh, the strut. Wiggle it around, smash it down. Yep. And then once we're all done, we'll put the cap back on. Get your uh, hardware, bolts, washers, and nuts. Kind of prepare the, the bigger ones are for the mirror, and the really, really small ones are for the holding in the VDU. But you got those, and the long bolts are the roof bolts. The shorter of the bolts are for the VDU bracket that holds the VDU. And we need a washer on the base side of each of these for the roof. And I'll show you guys how to do this. If you're only one person doing it, it's obviously a lot easier if you have two people uh, putting in stuff. But if there's only one of you here, I like to start by putting in one of the bolts from the inside going out and start on the driver's side. The reason why we use longer bolts is because you'll see that this crossbar actually goes on the inside of the existing strut. Mm -hmm. So you need longer bolts to make sure it passes through yeah. two. You can get one side bolt in. It will hang on its own, so you can work with it and get it in. Find the nuts. Uh oh where did the nuts go? Drag them out. Yep, there they are. So we can actually secure one of these on. It's not gonna go anywhere, and we can go work on the other side and get this side on. 
course, this is always the fun part of making everything line up. And you must be careful on this passenger side. You have that cable going through. You do not want to put a bolt through the cable. Not fun to replace a fuse on these and or the cable inside the strut. If I can find the hole. And there's and again just make sure we're not poking through the wire yeah we did not put a washer on the outside because there's not enough short. room these bolts are a little too short to put a washer on the outside so when you're done with the installation you will have four extra washers it's all right these nuts have the flange on it it will accommodate it so now we got those two in we can just swing this up and again just on this side watch the cable that's on the inside Got lucky it went all the way through without an issue. <sighs> Gonna need that later. Need that one. New bolts are eight millimeter and the wash or the nut is a ten millimeter. We have one more bolt over here too. Yeah so. we have one more bolt. We get this a little tightened. I'm gonna reach down here. Grab the Thank you. I bet good luck that fell. Yeah, put it up here. I grabbed the other one for the, the uh, back bracket. Alright, once you get the half hoop in and tighten down, you put in the there's, back bracket. There's your carb. Right. Here's your VDU back bracket and the smaller bolts. Yeah, there'll be with two the washer. There'll be two in a package. Yep. You will use washers on both sides of this particular yeah, the, bolt. These bolts are long enough. You will you'll be able to use both washers. So if you're sitting in the car, the cutout from the if you're sitting in the driver's seat is on the lower right. Washer. So you want it sort of like angling down, which so which makes sense because you want the screen angling down towards the driver. Mm. Up. Same eight and ten. There we go. Next, we can work on the cabling to the VDU. We got our clamps. So these are the two kind of guides for the. Uh... Yeah, they got the holes to hold the the cable in it. I usually put those towards the front so the driver and people inside don't see the cabling when they go across. So the cable pushes down from the top. So this is the harness that, that goes through there. But before we put it in, we're gonna connect it to the top of the strut there. Yep, get it nice and secure there. And then also include our adapter for the VDU. And then this is our connection to the toggle switch on the back cover. All right. When you do install these on your, make sure that bottom spade is towards the bottom. That makes this up is on and this is off. Just mine where those spade connectors are. So we're not putting them in upside down. If you do, then down will be on, up will be off. Uh-huh. And uh and confuse everyone. Exactly. Get these in. It could oh, be this in the, 22. Could be in the box. Yep. So this is a good note here that this vehicle is actually a, Number two, and they had two number twos. This vehicle came in an earlier shipment, so we set aside the VDU and asked the property what number to give this. We're going to give this actually number 22. Um, so uh, they go one through 20, and then they have another one and another two. So we'll have the number one be 21, the number two be 22. You see other vehicles that are here. Which one are you grabbing? 21. Right now. 21. There's no 22 over there. No 22 over there. I thought we used it on two. Did we use it on two, or did we use it on 22? I didn't see it too. Or 22. So we can always change the programming. Yeah, and the numbers on it. Not a problem. 
So you can see that that actually hooks in. That's the old big opening. There are four screws for the monitor to stay in. Right, two will go on this side of the plastic cover. So you'll put the top two in here, right to the plate. And the holes don't line up when it's resting, yeah, so you have to jiggle a little jiggle bit. Jiggle a little bit. Usually, hand start it helps, so it can get it in there. Lift the little monitor a little, but not off the hook. But get them started, and we can always tighten them up. The top two, bottom two is used with a cover to secure it. Now there's a little cutout in the top left of the of the plastic backing. You Where see it right there? Hangs out. Exactly. So make sure everything sits in. Again, start this with by hand so we can get the screw. And in since the it's actually toggled on, it is. the screen is actually powering up. Which is always a good sign. And the beep from the cart technology. Secure, run your cable into the channels that we have here. And this is always the discretion part. We have an, a lot of slack. I fold them over and get them up here to zip tie them down up in the corner here. I'm trying to as tight as we can to the roof, try to keep them out of the elements. Try to keep that cap kind of flush against the plastic a little bit if you can mm -hmm. to keep the rattling down, keep it in place, keep it yeah. dry. We'll put it on two or three zip ties around the major connector and the bundle of cables to keep it on the strut. There's one. We'll add another one over the top portion of the connector, but not on the tab that you need to push down to release it. So it was a tight and one to secure the cable further back. And we don't want hanging wire anywhere. No, we're trying not to show any wire or hang any wire. We're going to get it as secured down as we can. Up and, and tighten. And of course, micro cutters, get them as flush as you can, or you might leave a spur on the, the cut. And then the cap on the end of the strut. Yep. And uh, you want that, put this back on the windshield holder, pops back on, cap right there. here, goes on the cap here, where our wires had been coming through. Next, right all there. of it is on, we need the side mirror, part of the kit. So some of the leftover on this 2 plus 2 installation is going to be this is it. This the is strut it. cover down strut there. Strut cover, some extra washers, essentially, yeah. and your extra bolts, old bolts and washers that we did not need. Yeah, those would be the four short ones that went through the, the single strut top. Mm -hmm. All right, we got the mirror itself, the big bolt to hold it on the frame. You you there's a hole right there to the left of the VDU. And there's a hole on the right side too. It's kind of up to you guys' discretion whether you want it on the driver's side or the passenger side. Right. Some people actually have put it on using the holes from here, so it sticks out the side, but we're finding that causes a problem for the holder. people knocking off the mirrors and so. Mm -hmm. Simple enough on the mirrors. You got the two bol uh, bolt and this, the holder. Washers. I use, yeah, washer and then the bolt. And I usually put it on the very bottom one. Tighten that up. It is a one half on this. I try to line it up so the caution is on the bottom. That's on. And then this one is a 15 millimeter, both sides. Uh, bolt our washer through, and then through the roof, bolting right through here. So the flat part is facing up. Yeah, it's facing up just like that. And then you got your washer to go on the bottom. Again, 15 and 15. I'm gonna hold it on one side with my. Oh, not the 15 now. There we go. That is the.
a Tempo 2 Plus 2. That is, though the screen is on. You can see we preloaded a welcome. I turn it on for the commercial uh, in in installation. Unlike golf, we don't see a golf course. So the screen pretty much was black when driving around uh, while being used, unless you entered a zone, which would launch a message. So we actually have decided to include as a standard view for the driver, the consumer view, which we're waiting for it to pull up. But once it does pull up, you'll be able to connect to Wi-Fi from that main screen and you'll be good to go. The Wi-Fi is a critical last step to make sure that any updates, any property information uh, is pushed to the screen. These screens were preloaded with all the, all the information, but if we added zones and did anything to uh, the site in the VCC, uh, those updates would still need to have, have to load onto the units and Wi-Fi is required for that. So this may take a while, so this shall be the last uh, part of the video. Thank you and good luck with your installation.